Hello there, this is Tom Cosm here. I've got a cool video for you today. I'm very excited about showing a new technique that I've come up with using the new Ableton Push um, and Max for Live. Um, I was quite lucky to get one of these pushes um, and I've been playing with it for a few weeks and uh, I've come up with some cool stuff. I've been doing some jams if you're following my channel, um, but kind of been staring at it, kind of going, I really want to come up with something unique, a, a really kind of a hacker way to use it. And I think I've got that today and um, it's very exciting because uh, it's going to completely change the way I do all my live sets and it seems to be working flawlessly so far. So the whole concept of it is um, is, is, is using dummy clips. So if you're not familiar with dummy clips, very quickly they're, they're audio clips that run on an audio channel that don't actually play audio but they still send parameter changes. So you can have these blank clips that, um, that, will, that will change a parameter and the parameter will change the incoming audio into the track. Okay, so that's, um, I've got plenty of videos on that and there's videos all over the place on that kind of thing. But the cool thing we can do with this is we can um, trigger these, uh, these, these dummy clips via a Max for Live patch, um, which, is, which is quite exciting. Now the way that I've got this set up, actually I'm just going to zoom in a bit here, make it 100%, get rid of my sends. So if we scroll over to where my dummy clips are, this is called dummy clip one. Now you'll see here I've got a whole bunch of dummy clips. Now see how they're just blank audio clips, there's nothing really there. Now this first one, um, if we go into the envelopes mode, uh, this one, uh, you know, this one has absolutely nothing on it. So this is this resets any parameter, which I've got a filter delay here. This sets everything to a null state. So uh, this has absolutely no effect on the sound whatsoever. But if I move up through these dummy clips um, and open them up, you'll see that it changes audio effect rack and it changes the decay time. And I've got a little uh, uh, a parameter change here. So by going into this, this space here, if I play this clip, you'll notice that this um, uh, delay time here will go up one like so, and each one of these clips, basically it's like a preset which will change this particular rack I've got uh, in a specific way. Um, I'm using the filter delay with very, very short delay times, which mean, and on left and right channels, which means that it's gonna have a very wide space. So, and, and place the sound different places around your head. It's quite a neat trick to get lots of space into your sound. <clears throat> so that's very cool. So I'm gonna go over here. I've got this tune. This is one of the tunes in my, um, in my mega set which is going to be available soon it's a little bit late but anyway so if i play this here this particular tune has a very has a, a, a point where there's just a kick drum and a bass line just going over and over and over and this is where i wanted to do some really cool live stuff with the bass line um, <clears throat> to make it sound really cool so let's just play that and if i open up my sends here i'm going to bring the bass channel down i'm going to turn up send c which goes all the way over here to this particular return track here, which is called Million Bass Fucker. I should really change the names of things before I make them public. The audio of this is getting sent to D1 Space. So if I scroll across here, you'll see I have an audio channel set up called D1 Space and just get rid of my uh, sends and stuff so you can see it. So this D1 Space is where I had these particular um, dummy clips. So this one, if you just listen, if you're in headphones, you better get this effect. So that's just playing it cleanly. And if we move through these, it'll change the kind of space of the sound. Okay, very, very, very subtle effect. Now, I used to just click these or assign them to buttons or assign them to keys on the keypad to get the effect that I want. But um, what I've actually got over here, you'll see I've got two kind of uh, MIDI tracks, uh, which are loaded up, which um, are before the space. And now the space trigger, all I've got here is a simple drum rack. And the reason I've got that is you, if you look over here on the push, um, on a on a on a drum rack track, it'll it knows it's a drum rack, so it sets you up with 16 pads here. You've got your patterns here, so you can have uh, longer patterns or shorter patterns. And then here, these uh, these buttons here, that gets 32. These are a step sequencer. Okay, so that's 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 neat. Now the reason I've done this is because it, it has this particular mode. Now this space trigger here isn't actually playing anything in the drum rack. You'll notice that all the drum racks are completely empty, all the slots are completely empty. That's because over here on Space Send, we've got a, uh, a Max for Live patch, which I'll call Dr. Dummy at the moment, note to clip launch. So uh, if I go into my ins and outs here, you'll see the MIDI from the Space Send uh, track is coming from the Space Trigger 1. <clears throat> so any note that I push here, uh, you know, this is, this is C, negative 2, I believe, uh, C sharp, D, D sharp, and so on, it, this one, this this particular track will actually pick up the MIDI notes that I'm playing from this track, and of course, what it does is it takes um, it takes the pitch of the note that's currently it's currently being fed, and then triggers a clip slot on this D space track, um, depending on what note it is. 
Uh, so for example, if I uh, go back to this trigger track here and I just hit one, you'll see how it's triggering this dummy clip. I can hit this one, it triggers the third one. I can move all the way through the spectrum like so. And um, I, I'll, get in, I'll do a video on building this from scratch because it's quite tech um, a little bit later. But to get an idea, here's the, here's the clip. If I open up the max patch, <clears throat> go into presentation mode, um, it's a bit of a hack from um, the Ableton uh, Chooser API. Um, so a lot of the, the work is, is kind of done, but I've figured out a way to kind of hack it up. <clears throat> so if you look here, you've got a simple note in. Um, the note in gets sent over here. Um, this number here is just for a, um, an offset if you need it. This gets fed into uh, into into this Chooser uh, JavaScript, which chooses a particular clip. And also you, we've got um, uh, a track selector up here. Um, and then of course the note also sends to a plus one, sends to a bang, and that sends to a live function fire, which will actually trigger the clip. The reason I have a plus one is just because in case you hit uh, C negative two, which is a zero, the bang doesn't actually fire. So that's just a, that's just a fire function. Um, it's very, very, very simple. And if you go into presentation mode, you see um, <clears throat> these are the only, this is the only thing you really need to change this track. Um, so I'll just go back here, go out of Mac, uh, Max for Live mode, and uh, so you can pick any track here, and then depending on what note you push on this one, it will uh, it will change the slot. I'm just going to use the MIDI keyboard here so we can um, see it working. So see as I push notes, if I scroll down, I can move through, and it will pick individual dummy clips. Now that's the reason this is cool. I'll show you why this is pretty cool. Um, so if I uh, go back to my space trick here and I move over to the push, uh, let's just play that um, bass loop again. So it's very, very boring at the moment. I'm just going to turn it up a bit. Now, of course, on the push, if I hit record, what it's going to do is it's, start, it's going to record a clip and it's going to actually follow the pattern that I play that's um, doing the spatial stuff. And I take it off. That's going to completely follow uh, the pattern that I created here. Really, really cool for a live situation. You'll see, oh, let's put the clip down here. Very neat. I can also, uh, I don't have to just use, um, I don't have to record things. I can actually record them in a sequencer. So let's play that again. So remember, this is this this key here is the uh, is uh, the kind of the no value thing. So this is just the complete uh, dry signal. So I can put in a dry signal on uh, every first beat. Find a space one, that one there. Let's put it on this one and this one. Go back to the clean one. Maybe that one there. So now we've got some really cool kind of spatial stuff happening uh, with the bass line. Now that's a very, very simple one. Of course, um, if, 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 oops, let me just stop that here. Now, um, that's, um, that's, that's the first series of dummy clips. So all three of these tracks kind of uh, are together in a way for that particular thing. If we move over here, I'll open my ins and outs. You'll see how the, um, where are we here? The D1 space, you'll see the audio two goes to D1 phase. So I've got another set of three over here and these ones I have different um, kind of flan flanges on them so I've got a sorry a phaser and uh, depending on what dummy clip I play it'll change the three parameters of the phaser which are important which is the dry wet feedback and frequency so this is nothing so just kind of neat little uh, changes in the phaser but if I go over to my trigger we can go back over to the push. Make sure we have the uh, arm on. And when you get happy with something, you can record it. And of course, you can also quantize that all now if you play out of time. Again, very, very subtle, but um. It's a very, you can use this in a live situation to basically sequence presets of racks that you've uh, you've you've made up. 
Um, and finally, if you see the audio two here, it goes to D1 Redux. So I've got a Redux here. So if we look here, uh, I've got this one split into two chains, one just covering the bass and the sub stuff because I don't want to apply the Redux to the low end of things. But this particular chain here, I've got a Redux, a Reverb, and a Ping Pong Delay. Um, and again, if I uh, click on this Redux channel here, the push uh, resets to, get rid of the mode, the push resets to various things I can do with the Redux. Again, we can just uh, play and sequence it. kind of uh much yeah i'll just have to stop that um yeah we've got a much different different kind of bass i mean it's still the same bass line but um the reason i've got three things here is because it can kind of rack them up so the first thing does a particular effect and then i find that the second thing which is a phaser kind of complements what i do on the second effect uh, on from the first effect so the first one being a spatial thing the second one kind of phasing it kind of changing the sound and the third one the redux which is kind of the more brutal effect which um really really changes it up um so that's 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 where i'm at at the moment um i've been building it and having a lot of fun with it um i'm sure i'm gonna um come up with a lot of these i mean it's really really cpu unintensive which is really neat as well so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna have a lot of these in my in my new live set um especially this mega set which uh everyone's gonna be able to download but people who want it can get it um i've got some more over here but i'll save those for a bit later but you can do things like instead of having a spatial thing you could load up a beat repeat that um that uh, turns on the repeat and changes to a particular uh, pick a particular time duration. So you can kind of use this to capture loops. Um, you can, you know, uh, you can you can use anything you want. You can apply these dummy clips to any parameter um, that that is usually assignable with an Ableton. So uh, that's that's the exciting thing that I've come up with uh, at the moment. And uh, yeah, I hope you hope you find it as exciting as I do. And yeah, I'll get back to you with more video soon. And I'll do a more in-depth one probably in a couple of weeks um, on how I actually built the Max Patch. Cool. Thanks a lot, TomCosm.com.